All right, let's talk about net ionic equations. Net ionic equations are sort of a key topic in section 8.2, and we'll start by remembering double displacement reactions. And it says here, predict the products. Um, I'm going to jump to the document camera for a minute and show you how I do that. But I'm guessing we remember double displacement reactions and the general principle there, um, sort of uh, the double date swap scenario where ion swap places. This is a silver cation. It's plus one, um, just by reasoning the fact that nitrate is negative one and there's only one silver there. Remember, silver is typically plus one, um, and so we'll typically name that just silver nitrate without saying silver one nitrate. But it's still going to be plus one in the products, and so when it swaps places with sodium, we're going to get this formula of a plus one cation and a negative one anion silver chloride. The other product of this reaction is, of course, sodium nitrate. And what's interesting about this reaction is that while we started with two soluble compounds, and we're going to assume that they were an aqueous solution to begin with, we end up with one insoluble compound. This is called a precipitate. Um, just like uh, snow and rain are going to precipitate from a gaseous atmosphere, and we call it precipitation, this is the precipitation of a solid from an aqueous solution or an aqueous atmosphere. The other product here is also soluble, so that's going to be an aqueous solution. This is called a precipitation reaction, sometimes called a metathesis reaction, and it's a double displacement reaction in which one of the products is insoluble and so appears to precipitate from solution. The silver chloride in this case happens to be a white powder, so while it looks like the solution um, may appear to be milky, and if you wait a little while, you'll see that it's actually a white solid that's in suspension and eventually settles out. Let me show you a model similar to the one that we looked at last time, um, now that we've predicted the products of this reaction, and talk about what really happens when you put these two compounds in water. We looked at what happens when you put silver chloride in water versus sodium chloride, and here we're going to start by putting silver nitrate and sodium chloride in water. Both of those are soluble compounds, so of course they dissociate. Now, notice this is what the reactants really are, is four different ions in aqueous solution. So what happens eventually is the insoluble compound precipitates because that ion-ion attraction is actually stronger than the ion-dipole attraction between the ions in water. As a result, the sodium ions and nitrate ions stay in solution, but the silver chloride precipitates. We're going to see a solid at the bottom of the reaction vessel, at the bottom of the beaker or the test tube. The sodium and nitrate ions really do not react at all, and we call them spectator ions for that reason. They really don't participate in a chemical reaction. Here you can see the same thing modeled with many, many, many different formula units of those compounds, and eventually all the silver ions and chloride ions find each other and form the white precipitate at the bottom of the container. And all we're left with in aqueous solution is sodium ions and nitrate ions. So this is how we're going to analyze double displacement reactions. We're going to first write what we call a complete ionic equation. And a complete ionic equation is based on the principle that any compound which exists in aqueous solution and is a soluble ionic compound, we remember, truly exists as ions in aqueous solution. Notice the sodium chloride is in aqueous solution, so it exists as dissociated ions. Just like you saw in that animation, before the reaction occurs, there are really just one, two, three, four ions in aqueous solution. However, at the end of the reaction, we form solid silver chloride. Notice solid silver chloride does not dissociate into ions. But the sodium nitrate, the other product, is a soluble compound and exists as dissociated ions. This is the first step in writing net ionic equations, is to take what we call the molecular equation and turn it into a complete ionic equation. You might call it the complete pain in the next step because it is kind of time consuming to write out, but you may be able to skip that step soon and just write what is called the net ionic equation, which is the formation of this precipitate. Notice that's the reaction that actually occurs. These ions are not reacting at all. Before this reaction occurred, they were there to begin with and are now completely unaltered. And for that reason, we call them spectator ions. They're really not involved in the reaction. The only reaction that truly occurs is that the silver ions and chloride ions, which were previously dissociated, form an ionic compound. So 
Let's talk about the next step, which is where we go from a complete ionic equation to a net ionic equation. Um, the net ionic equation is essentially what is left over after we cancel out spectator ions. So let's identify the things that are going to be left over. They're circled in blue here. Those are the species which are actually reacting. The ones that I'm circling in red here are actually spectator ions. Why? Notice sodium exists as an ion in aqueous solution before and after. And nitrate exists as an ion, again, in aqueous solution before and after. There's really no change for sodium or nitrate, and so we cancel them out. They appear in the reactants the same way as they do in the products, so if there's no change between reactants and products, they're really not reacting. They're not participating in the reactant at all. We call those the spectator ions. What's left over is what we call the net ionic equation. Silver ions and chloride ions form the silver chloride precipitate. So we have three steps here. The complete balanced chemical formula equation, sometimes called the molecular equation, even though it's usually ionic compounds. That is the conventional way we'd write chemical equations, like the one you saw me doing on paper a minute ago. The complete ionic equation shows all dissociated ions, even the ones that don't react. This step is optional, although I'd recommend practicing it at first. It's kind of time consuming to write out. The net ionic equation is what you're going to be tasked with doing in many of the problems in this section. The net ionic equation focuses only on the ions that are reacting. We omit the spectator ions from the complete ionic equation and we're left over with the net ionic equation. Another thing you'll be asked to do is to identify spectator ions, which things can be omitted to form the net ionic equation. Here's the example we looked at before that I wrote out on paper. You can see the complete ionic equation shows all the ions in solution, and the net ionic equation reduces it to what actually changes. Silver ions and chloride ions existed as dissociated ions to begin with, but in the products, they're not dissociated ions. They're actually formed a solid crystalline precipitate. It's worth considering the possibility that a precipitate may not form at all. We'll need to use the solubility rules to decide all the various outcomes. It could be that no precipitate forms, and if that's the case, there really is no reaction that occurs. Typically, we're given two compounds. Let's call them AB and XY, and the products, of course, are going to be XB and AY. We're almost always going to be asked to consider two soluble compounds to begin with, aqueous solutions that are mixed together. And now we need to evaluate what the state symbol of each of these is. One possibility, and it's probably the most common one, is that one of these is a precipitate and the other is not. Notice here I write S for solid to identify the precipitate. And you'll need to use the solubility rules to determine which, if either of them, are soluble. However, it's quite possible that when you look at the solubility rules, you find that both of the solutions, or excuse me, both of the products are actually soluble. And in that case, the complete ionic equation would involve every single ion canceling out. And so we would really just write, no reaction occurs, NR. Now it's a very rare circumstance, although it sometimes can occur, where you have two precipitates that form. And if that's the case, you're going to see that it always involves some of those exceptions to the solubility rules. So I'm going to go through some example problems here, sort of like the ones you have in the homework. Um, the first one has a reaction between sodium hydroxide and lead nitrate occurring. So let's see, this is a double displacement reaction, AB plus XY. So I'm going to swap ions places. Sodium will be paired up with nitrate, since sodium is plus 1, and nitrate is negative 1. That makes a simple compound, NaNO3. Lead, notice, is a plus 2 cation in the reactants. We can assume that double displacement reactions are not redox reactions. In other words, the lead charge is not going to change. That means lead is still going to be plus 2 in the products, and a plus 2 lead cation combines with a negative 1 hydroxide ion like that. So first, you'll notice that I added subscripts to make the formula valid. I did not add coefficients to balance the equation. Now that I have valid formulas, I can add 
coefficients to balance the equation. Don't try to balance the equation with subscripts. First, get the formulas right based on the charges of the ion. Now let's see, I have two hydroxide ions in the products, which means there must have been two hydroxide ions to begin with. Two nitrates and two nitrates. Should have left a little bit more room for myself for that coefficient. Let's talk about the complete pain in the next step, which is the complete ionic equation. It says here it's optional, but I'd recommend doing those until you're comfortable. What I'm going to need to do first is determine the state symbols of both of these products. These are both aqueous reactants. However, the products, I need to determine what state symbol goes here and what state symbol goes here. To do that, I need to read my solubility rules. So you'll want to make sure that you have these solubility rules hand, handy. Um, and the more you read through them, the less you'll need to refer to them because you're going to start remembering some of these. Read through them in order until you find one that applies to the compound in question. First rule says all nitrates and acetates are soluble, or all nitrate and acetate compounds are soluble. That means this is soluble, so I'm going to write AQ because it exists in aqueous solution in the products. As I read down the rules, the first one that I find that applies to hydroxide says that hydroxides are insoluble unless they are hydroxides of sodium or lithium, which is a higher numbered rule or a higher ranked rule. So this is actually going to be a solid, which means this is a precipitation reaction. All right, so let's write the complete ionic equation. Notice it says optional. You're welcome to skip this step, but I'd recommend you do it a few times to get uh, comfortable with it. We're going to consider both reactants and both products one at a time. First of all, let's consider sodium hydroxide, which is a soluble compound. Soluble compounds, if they're ionic compounds, are going to dissociate into ions in aqueous solution. So here, I'm going to write them as dissociated ions. Now, I'll include coefficients, although sometimes we'll see those aren't going to be necessary in the net ionic equation. I'll include them here for now. The next compound I'll consider, lead nitrate. The lead 2 nitrate is also a soluble ionic compound, and so I'm going to write the ions that it dissociates into. Lead, two ions, and nitrate ions, two of them. This is why we call it the complete pain in the next step. I'm barely going to be able to fit it on the page. Next, sodium nitrate is an aqueous solution. That means it consists of sodium ions in aqueous solution and nitrate ions in aqueous solution, two of them. Now, I'm going to consider the last compound here. This is solid lead to hydroxide, which means it does not dissociate into ions. It does not exist as dissociated ions. It exists as undissociated solid lead nitrate. Can you identify the spectator ions? Anything that appears the same in the products as it did in the reactants didn't change at all and is eliminated as a spectator ion. The other one that's a spectator, clearly, are the nitrate ions. So again, you can see some of the coefficients that I paid attention to don't seem to be relevant, but it is important here to notice that there are two hydroxide ions involved for every mole of lead or every lead ion, and the net ionic equation is what's left over. In other words, this is what's left over. Lead ions in aqueous solution and hydroxide ions in aqueous solution form solid lead to hydroxide. That's our net ionic equation. Do you think you could have gone straight from here to here without doing the intermediate step? Perhaps after a few more examples. Here's the second example in this worksheet. And you can see I've already written the formulas for the products. Lithium is a plus one cation, and nitrate is a negative one anion. So the formula, of course, is not Li3NO32. Li NO3 is all we need. Don't try to balance the equation. First, just write the formulas. Similarly, the formula here has to be based on the charges of the cations. Magnesium is plus 2, and phosphate is a negative 3 anion. So the only way to make a neutral compound is to have a 3 to 2 ratio. After doing that, there's two more steps I can consider. One is balancing the equation, and it looks like here, in order to have the equation balanced, I'm going to need to put a 2 here, a 6 here. That means I have 6 lithiums on either side, and since I have 6 nitrates and I put a 3 here, I've got 3 magnesiums and 2 phosphates on either side as well.
The other thing I need to do is consider state symbols. Lithium nitrate is a soluble compound, so I write AQ, because where there is plenty of water around, it'll exist in aqueous solution. However, phosphates are insoluble. It's a good thing, since our bones are made of calcium phosphate. It would be a whole different way to live if calcium phosphate were soluble in water. Now, the complete ionic equation, again, is a time-consuming step, and we do that, we construct it by considering all four compounds and whether those compounds exist as dissociated ions or as ionic solids. So I'll go ahead and do that step and show you what I come up with. So there we are. All of those compounds I've given consideration as to whether they exist as dissociated ions or not, and I barely fit it on the page. First one, lithium phosphate exists as dissociated lithium and phosphate ions. The second compound, magnesium nitrate, exists as dissociated magnesium and nitrate ions. In the products, lithium nitrate exists as dissociated ions, but notice magnesium phosphate does not. Magnesium phosphate is a solid, and so it does not dissociate into ions. Which are the spectator ions? Let's go ahead and cross out anything which appears the same in the reactants as it does in the products. The lithium ions have not reacted at all. They don't participate in the reaction. The nitrate ions also get eliminated. They are spectator ions. And what we're left with is magnesium ions and phosphate ions form our precipitate, our product, which is solid magnesium phosphate. Let's do one more. The next one I'm going to do here is a little bit different, and I'll show you why. It's going to involve what we'll learn later as an acid and a base, and we can think of this as hydrogen nitrate, and this is sodium hydroxide. Hydrogen is going to swap places with sodium and give us hydrogen hydroxide. Well, hydrogen hydroxide, of course, is essentially water. And we'll consider what state symbol would be appropriate there. The other product is sodium nitrate. Now, sodium nitrate clearly is a soluble compound. But what about water? Would it make sense to write AQ? That would be water dissolved in water. Well, water dissolved in water is water. So I'm going to write L for liquid. Water is a molecular substance. It does not ionize. And this is the most logical state symbol to put here. Now let's consider the net ionic equation, or I should say the complete ionic equation, which is how we're going to get there. This is a strong acid. And strong acids are strong electrolytes, which dissociate completely in solution. Now that means I'm going to have hydrogen ions and nitrate ions in aqueous solution. This is an ionic compound which also dissociates in solution. Sodium ions and hydroxide ions are what it produces. What about water? Does water ionize in solution? Not to any significant extent. And you could write water as H2O or as HOH. And the sodium ions and nitrate ions in the product, of course, those are part of a soluble ionic compound, and so I'm going to write those as dissociated ions. And then once again, we can identify spectators. Nitrate is a spectator. Sodium is a spectator. And we're left with kind of an interesting net ionic equation. H plus and OH form water. Now I'm writing water as H2O. We could write it as HOH just as easily. But this is what we'll learn in section 8.3, is an acid-base neutralization reaction. Here's one more problem we can go through. The next problem is a little simpler. We're going to look at the double displacement reaction, and that is sodium chloride being one product and calcium carbonate being the other. Again, we want to balance the equation and add state symbols. Balancing this equation looks like it's going to be pretty straightforward. Two sodiums, two chlorides, one calcium, one carbonate. We can use the solubility rules to determine which of these is going to be our precipitate. And again, if we had two aqueous products, there would be no net ion equation. And all we would write is NR for no reaction. But most of the time, we're going to see that one of the two products is insoluble. In this case, it's the calcium carbonate. So.
If we write out the net ionic equation um, immediately, you might be able to see it coming without doing the complete ionic equation. Calcium and carbonate ions are going to react to form calcium carbonate. Now, after doing a couple of these, like I said, you may be able to step that, excuse me, skip that entirely optional middle step. Um, but I'll show you what that one looks like in case you're interested and how I eliminated spectator ions. So there it is, all of those steps of the complete ionic equation shown. Now I'm guessing that you guys can skip this step after you've done a few of these practice problems and jump straight to the final answer, but you can see how I got there. Sodium is a spectator ion. It's not involved in the reaction because it appears in the products unaltered from the reactants. And similarly, the chloride ions are spectator ions. And you'll notice which ions are typically spectators. It makes sense that they're things like acetate, sodium, lithium, chloride, because they're so seldom part of a solid or insoluble product. And what I'm left with is calcium and carbonate form the solid calcium carbonate precipitate. So the assignment that you have um, to tackle is very similar to this. And I'm never going to require that you do the complete ionic equation, um, just that you get the net ionic equation and correctly identify the state symbols of the products in the overall reaction. I should also mention what a few important components of the net ionic equation are. The charge on the reactants, ions, is very important. There's a big difference between a calcium atom and a calcium ion. State symbols are also very important, so it's important to note that this is an aqueous solution. This is an aqueous solution, but the product is solid. So make sure you're including charges and state symbols where appropriate when you're writing the net ionic equations. Um, I've got another written tutorial that I'm going to post in Classroom, which I think is helpful, and there's a couple other good videos that I'm going to link of other people trying to do the same thing I'm trying to do here, which is explaining uh, how to write net ionic equations in a video. Um, Send me an email if you guys have questions, and um, we'll have a chance to discuss this in the class meeting on Wednesday.